In this video we will go through 10 players who no one thought would make it as a professional footballer. They were completely counted out or maybe just very late bloomers bursting onto the highest level when most people would claim it's way too late. Let's jump straight into it. Number 10. Luca Toni This Italian legend was pouring in goals and became the Serie A top scorer as late as 2016 at the age of 38 years old. Luca is best known for his size, his distinct finishing, his eye for goal, as well as his signature celebration. But what most people don't know about him is his not so convincing times in his early career. Luca Toni was playing in Serie C in his early 20s, making no money. But then, after a breakthrough season at 23 years old, he got a chance with Serie B squad Vicenza. Serie B did not pay much at this time, and Luca Toni had to ask for funds from his family to continue his dream of being a great footballer. Luca was still in Serie B, barely making ends meet at 25 years old, but had great success with Palermo, who got promoted to Serie A, and he later moved to Fiorentina and became one of Europe's most respected strikers. Number 9. Antonio Di Natale Immediately we have another Italian on the list, but it isn't the last Italian. It seems like Italian players just age like fine wine. Di Natale, known for being a versatile quick striker and also for being too damn overpowered back in FIFA 13, this guy was a late bloomer. He did not make his Serie A debut until he was just one month shy of turning 25. But after that he had a 14 year long run in the Serie A, becoming the top scorer twice in a row. Number 8. Ricky Lambert Lambert was then later playing for lower league clubs his entire 20s and didn't make his Premier League debut until he was 30 and a half years old his boyhood dream of signing to Liverpool, which was his favorite club he always rooted for. Number 7. Miroslav Klose The World Cup top scorer was never really seen as a big talent, and he was actually on his way to becoming a carpenter. But during his late teenage years, his game for local club SK Blaugach Diedelkopf just got better and better, and he scored a bunch of goals. He then got the chance to join a reserve club to the then Bundesliga club FC08 Homburg, and he played so well with the reserves that he actually got a chance with the real Bundesliga team. And well, great things went from there. Number 6. Marco Materazzi This controversial Italian centre-back is probably mainly remembered for being the guy who got headbutted by Zidane in the World Cup final back in 2006. But if we look past all the red cards and trash talking, he was one of the best centre backs of his time. He won the World Cup as well as the Champions League, and also became the Defender of the Year in Serie A in 2007. Materazzi actually did not make his debut in Serie A until just a few months before he turned 24 years old, with him jumping between different clubs in Serie B and Serie B before. Number 5. Didier Drogba Champions League winner, African Footballer of the Year twice, and the highest scoring foreigner in Chelsea. This guy is a total legend, and his name still echoes the football world, despite that he haven't played at the highest level since 2016. What many people don't know is that Drogba's youth career is almost non-existent. Drogba moved back and forth between the Ivory Coast and France during his childhood, playing mainly at the streets, and when his family finally settled down in a suburb to Paris, he joined a real football club for the first time at the age of 15. Despite this, he was still regarded as a talent and a good player. But later, at 18 years old, he failed to make an impression on the first team coach in his then club, the semi-professional club Levalios. The young Drogba finished school and moved to the city Le Mans to study economy at university at age 19. And he somehow got a trial at the League 2 club Le Mans. 
and he played with the club, but he almost quit because his first two years was filled with injuries, but later managed to sign his first professional contract at 21, since the coaches saw something special in him. And well, the rest is history. Number 4. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer The Manchester United manager had a long stretch at the Red Devils as a player and was loved by the fans, earning his nickname the Baby-Faced Assassin. He had a successful 11 years at the club, scoring 91 goals in 235 games, many of them coming on as a substitute, giving him a reputation of being a super sub. Solskjaer's career is unbelievable, but it's almost even more crazy how he went from being completely unknown to starting in one of the world's biggest clubs in only two years. Solskjaer played his whole childhood and up until he was 21 years old at his local club Klausenengen, which played in the Norwegian 3rd division, which is quite a bit from uh, professional football. Solskjaer scored a lot of goals which gave him the chance at 1st division team Molde, which turned out to be a great success with him scoring 41 goals in 54 games his first season. He then got brought in by Man United completely unknown to the English fans. And as the only striker to arrive at Old Trafford that year, it was widely expected that his first season would be spent as a backup to Eric Cantona and Andy Cole, with only occasional first team opportunities. However, within weeks of his arrival, it was clear that it would be a key part of the first team sooner than had been anticipated, and would also prove himself to be one of the biggest Premier League bargains of the season. Number 3. Ian Wright this is the oldest player on the list, and it has been a while since he was active, but he has an amazing story. Ian Wright came from a troubled background. His father left early, and he spent his childhood with his mother and an abusive and cruel stepfather in poverty, by English means. He had a few chances with trials as a teen, but never managed to land himself a spot at one of the British football academies, and he resorted to playing for amateur and non-league teams. He worked with labor and tried to support him and his young wife, but at around 20 to 21 years old, he got into a bunch of trouble. Wright spent a short spell in prison for failing to pay fines and driving without insurance. When being locked up, he apparently burst into tears and prayed to God and said in his prayer that he would do anything in his power to make it as a professional footballer. He then got out and started playing with semi-professional club Greenwich Borough, and he later got picked up by Crystal Palace. He played so well for Crystal Palace that he got brought in by Arsenal, and then later became one of Arsenal's most loved and important player during the 90s. And now he's known as a legend. Number 2. Captain rather poverty and crime-stricken country like Colombia make it to the absolute top of world football. Well, Carlos Bacchia did exactly that. He says in an interview that he had given up his dream of becoming a footballer since long, but then he got a trial with local club Atletico Junior when he was 21 years old. And he still worked as a fisherman and also as a busboy at the side of his football career to provide for himself and his family. But then his career just went straight up. He scored many goals and he made such an impression in Colombia that Club Brigue invited him to Europe back in 2011 and this was when he was 25 years old. He became the top scorer in the Belgian first division and then went on to have many amazing seasons with both Milan in the Serie A and also in La Liga with Sevilla. And now he's in Villarreal still doing amazing for himself. And before revealing the number one on the list, I would just uh, like to say that I really appreciate if you liked the video, if you find it interesting, and also please subscribe if you'd like. Let's move on. Number one, Jamie Wardy. Jamie Wardy's rags to riches story became viral with the success of Leicester back in 2015-16 season, when Leicester won the Premier League. And the reason why this is number one on my list is the context. Just the fact that Leicester City managed to win the Premier League is so amazing in itself. 
and that one of the key players has such an incredible story that even Hollywood wants to make a movie about him. It all begins when Jamie Wardy is 16 years old. A very important age when it comes to football players and athletes in general, because around 16 is often when the chosen ones doubles down on their sport to make it to the top, and the vast majority actually quits or gets dropped by their teams. And the young Wardy? Well, he was dropped from his team Sheffield Wednesday with the explanation that he was too small and would be bullied off the ball at a higher level. Ward was devastated, but still decided to keep on playing in non-league football clubs through Stocksbridge Park Steels. He played in their youth teams, and 2007, at 20 years old, he broke into the first team. But uh, that was not really too much of an achievement. Stocksbridge is a non-league football club playing 8 divisions below the Premier League. Wardy worked at a factory during the days to make ends meet and usually got drunk on the weekends with, with his mates, living the real British working class lad lifestyle. However, his talent didn't go unnoticed forever. At 23 years old, after playing amazing for some time, other clubs opened their eyes up for him. He eventually got signed to Halifax Town, 6 divisions below the Premier League. He banged in goals and later got sold to Fleetwood Town, and now he was only 5 divisions away from the Premier League. But in Fleetwood he played extremely well and scored 31 goals in 36 games, becoming the top scorer of the division, and now a lot of clubs were after him, offering big money for the lightning quick scoring machine. Eventually, he got sold to Leicester for £1 million, pounds. Leicester who then played in the championship. And he made his debut for the team at 25 years old, and made his Premier League debut at 27 years old during the 14-15 season. And the season after that, well, they did the impossible and won the Premier League. Jamie also broke the record of most games in a row scored and also was just a few goals shy of becoming the top scorer in the league. That is just spectacular, amazing and yeah, completely unbelievable. And that was it for the video. And again, if you enjoyed it, please like and please subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Goodbye!